Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the New Forest. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Yew Tree Heath. It's about four miles to the southeast of Lyndhurst, uh, just off a minor road that comes off the Lyndhurst to Bewley Road, not far from Bewley Road Station. And we're going to be doing a roughly three, three and a half mile figure of eight walking route today. Uh, initially heading south, looking through one of my favourite bits of woodland in the forest, and then uh, heading north over some quite uh, stunning heathland. We'll be exploring the site of an old World War II anti-aircraft battery, and I expect we'll come across a few other interesting things along the way. Now, I'm filming uh, beginning of August, it's a beautiful sunny summer morning, perfect for walking, so do come along with us. Well I've parked my car at the Forestry Commission car park at Yew Tree Heath. I should point out that uh, the car parks normally close between I think it's the end of March to the end of July because the area around here is uh, popular with uh, ground nesting birds. And the car park itself is actually located on the site of a heavy anti-aircraft battery from the Second World War. It uh, protected Southampton to the east of here. Indeed, uh, the car park uses the old concrete service track to the site. Now over the years, the numbers and makeup of the guns here varied during the course of the war, but I know that in 1940, the battery was made up of four 3.7 inch anti-aircraft guns set on concrete emplacements around a central command post. I'll put up an aerial map showing where those were. And there was also a Bofors light AA gun, uh, 11 machine gun positions, and a number of accommodation storage buildings. It was codenamed Joyce and covered about 23 acres, but it was all decommissioned after the war, although it was kept in ready use mode until 1950. Now there is a little bit of evidence still here. I'm standing right in front of the what was the central command position and if we have a little wander around you can see there are still little bits of uh, concrete bits and pieces you can see where the cars park around the side. Well, just a few yards to the north of that central command position, a bit of concrete here. And if you've got time, you can have some fun exploring and trying to find out where each of the gun positions originally were, because there will be some concrete bases still here. Okay, well, we're going to start our sort of figure of eight walk by doing the southern loop. So I'm just going to walk down this little track here. In fact, just in front of me I can see evidence of a, another mound with concrete bits on it. I'm not a hundred percent sure what that was used for, but uh, oh, lovely to see the purple heather out in all its glory now. Right, let's cross over this ditch. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to head down this track here. The actual um, Battle HQ for this little anti-aircraft battery was uh, located in a house called The Bungalow, which is across that minor road that we're just about to cross at what is now the Fernie Croft Scout Camp. And I believe that uh, bungalow is still there. Uh, just before we cross this road, Again, some more evidence of the uh, anti-aircraft battery, uh, concrete bases of what would have been accommodation and storage buildings, all gradually being uh, absorbed back into the countryside. Well, it really is a glorious morning. The sun out, a few clouds about, but there's a fair bit of blue sky. So, I so said we're heading south towards the Fernie Crofts Scout Camp, but we're then going to circumnavigate it and have a look through some quite glorious woodland. Well, 
we're now going to circumnavigate Fernie Crofts. It was originally an enclosure with a bank and ditch around it. As you can see, that's, that's still here. And it was rented out to the monks at Bewley Abbey. And then following the dissolution of monasteries in 1538, it was given to the Earl of Southampton and uh, the Montague family thereafter. And it was sold off in 1899 as a private residence. I believe it was going to be a caravan park at one stage, but Hampshire County Council uh, bought it in 1975 for 33 acres and it became uh, a, a scout camp. Now, <laughs> just look at that structure through there. Now, it's a shame it's a private uh, land, otherwise I'd uh, go in there and give you a quick demonstration. <laughs> Hmm. Right, so we're going to carry on I say, alongside the scout camp heading for one of my favourite little bits of woodland in the New Forest. Logan! <laughs> uh, I say, I love this particular bit of woodland. It's, it's great in the summer because you get lots of shade from the sun. I often think one of the best times to come is in the winter. Well, you've got a lot of um, holly here. There are quite a few deciduous trees. And so October, November time, just at the end of autumn, you have this, some terrific brown colors in here. And, um, and then obviously into the, the deeper winter, it's got an atmosphere to this place. And you don't get too many people here as well, so it makes it quite peaceful. Well, this is as far south as I'm going to go on the walk, come through the woods. What a terrific view just behind me, but it does become very boggy. So we're now going to head back to the car park and start the northern part of the loop. It's worth just having a little look at the view here. Hopefully the uh, sun isn't going to be too much of a glare. In fact, over just in the far distance is the uh, King's Hat enclosure. We've done a, a walk there in the past and you, you could, if you wanted, to do a, a walk along the ridge and combine these two walks together. And also there, just over on the, the horizon, you can make out the towers of the uh, Forley oil refinery and then just to the right that one tower on its own is the Forley power station. It's, the power station is gradually being uh, demolished and I think the tower is the only thing that's left. <laughs> Well, we're now on the northern loop of our walk, which is the much longer loop. Most of the rest of the walk now is going to be on Heathland with some quite glorious views. Just behind me here, a trig point, which uh, Logan has just bagged. And just looking north, I can just make out Beauty Road Station and the Drift Inn, which will be our final destination. So, Let's kick on northwards. Just as we're wandering along, over there on my left is a barrow, a bowl barrow. Quite easy to spot, there's not too much gorse on top of it. And that one's about 25 metres in diameter, about two and a half metres high with a ditch around it. 
according to my map that should be a much smaller one about five meters in diameter very close to it but <laughs> I can't see it but uh, a good place just to give you a pan of the the scenery around here and those uh, woods now just on the horizon there I can make out that must be the the cranes uh, at the docks of Southampton must be now that's definitely the way to travel brings back memories <laughs> of me and my old boy Bo well this little gate that we're coming to and a little track is as far north as we're going to go. So just before we start heading westwards, a couple of things to look out for. I can just about make out in the, in the distance, the spire of the, the Lyndhurst Church. And also up there on the ridge, there's the, a very impressive white building. I'll see if I can get a, a photograph. It might be a bit hazy in this sun using the zoom, but it's Northerwood House built in 1780 and visited by King George III, I think it was, in 1789, and he changed its name to Mount Royal. But in the, the 1970s, I think it was all converted to, to flats. I'm on a lovely part of the walk now, strolling through some little tracks that are taking me through some heather and bracken. Now just behind me here in the little wooded area is a property, Decoy Pond Farm an Edwardian house but uh, I was reading that it was used as a, a filming location in 1974 for the film Brief Encounter that starred uh, Sophie Loren and Richard Burton. A lovely rowan tree with the berries glinting in the sunshine and just looking at the woodland there so typical of uh, the new forest with <laughs> the uh, the trees bear up to about four or five foot, that browsing line where the, the ponies have been um, eating, especially the, the holly. A beautiful, very, very peaceful day today. I can't hear a thing. Absolute silence. Isn't that lovely? Well, we're very much on the homeward leg now, not too far back to the car park. Enjoying some beautiful views still as we go along. I've just come up a path, nice and sandy, and regular viewers will know that Logan loves sand. So it's time for some Whippet Zoomies. Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks and do uh, put a like against that. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. That way, hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. We've had another super walk today glorious sunshine, some stunning heathland and some very pretty woodland. We're off to see if we can get a pint at the Drift Inn. <laughs> so until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio.